Hello and welcome to everybody on Cloud Fitness. So today I'm going to talk about a big data architecture and I'm pretty sure that most of you would have already uh, heard the name of Lambda architecture. And today we are going to talk about Lambda architecture. So when you say Lambda architecture, what it essentially does is it tries to reduce complexity in a data engineer's life. So when I say it tries to reduce complexity in a data engineer's life, I essentially mean that as a data engineer, what we want, we want to process the data as uh, without, without having to worry about whether it's a batch data or it's a streaming data, right? So this is where Lambda architecture comes into picture and this is where it helps. So if you go and check this, this is what we want, right? We want, uh, we have the data, uh, we have the data sources, we want to process it for the further downstream system without having to choose between batch or the streaming loads. And when you see this particular architecture, which you are seeing on my screen right now, this is how Lambda architecture helps us. So mm -hmm. it divides your incoming stream into two layers. Uh, when I say two layers, it is essentially your streaming layer and a batch layer. So when you talk about your streaming layer, it helps to process your streaming data. When I talk about your batch layer, it helps to process your batch data. And you don't have to worry about anything else. But before moving on to this, I'll actually clarify what I mean by streaming and the batch data. So when you talk about the streaming data, you try to process the data as soon as it arrives. So you might be taking the data in from your IoT systems, from your IoT devices, and you just want to, as soon as the data comes, you just want to process it. You, you, you don't need any latency, right? But when you talk about the batch data, you have latency over there. You, you process the data only if a certain condition is met. So when I say certain condition is met, you might want to process the data when uh, you, know, you have around 1,000 records, let's say then only process my data or process my data at a particular time during the day. You know, process my data at two o'clock. So that is your batch data. Batch data has a certain level of latency involved. Streaming data does not have any latency involved. So what Lambda architecture does is uh, your incoming stream, it divides and into a streaming layer and the batch layer. And eventually the data from both the layers is uh, uh, you know, taken in form of views. Batch data uh, collects the data in form of batch views and your streaming data forms real-time views. So using real-time view, views, you can actually query your data without latency and using your batch views, um, you can actually query your, you know, auto data all together at once. So your data in form of batch views and your real-time views comes inside the unified view. Right, I'll actually show you how. So let's go on to the next slide. So again, to reiterate, when you talk about Lambda architecture, it is the way of processing your big data without having to worry about your batch and streaming process because it uses a hybrid method or uh, it has a hybrid approach towards data processing. Uh, hybrid means it has both uh, batch, streaming, uh, batch and the streaming layer. So if you see in this uh, diagram, the point number one, you have your data and it goes into the batch layer. Now it goes into batch layer. It already has the master data set or your historical data set. It does your ETL operations. It processes your data over there. So all your traditional ETLs or uh, your data warehouse comes in the top layer of batch layer, right? And once the data is processed, it creates a batch view. And this batch view is basically your serving layer. Now, in the similar way, your data from point number one goes to the uh, four, which is your speed layer or the streaming layer, where your data is processed without latency as soon as it arrives and it creates real-time views. Now the user can query the real-time views without any latencies. And this real-time views also goes to the serving layer. So serving layer is a common layer where your data comes from both batch layer and speed layer, speed layer, which can eventually be queried. So this is how your Lambda architecture looks like. Also, I have tried to mention batch layer, serving layer and speed layer in little bit of detail over here. So 
batch layer it's you know processes it processes the data in your uh, batches and uh, you know we can find lots of etl and traditional data warehouses in the batch layer and you can basically schedule it something like in form of batches you may be once or twice in a day when you talk about the serving layer it 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 has the output from the batch layer in form of batch views and it has the output from speed layer in terms of uh, in form of uh, real time views right and uh, it also a uh, serving layer by default it adds indexes to the batch views so that uh, whenever a user is querying he has the low latency available available so when you, uh, when you already have indexes installed on your batch views so whenever you will query your data so you won't uh, it, it will happen in no time right and similarly uh, when you have speed layer that is also called your streaming layer it basically processes your streaming data without any latency also when you talk about this lambda architecture it is flexible yeah, you don't need to manage any server you uh, you know it has high availability and uh, as i mentioned going back to the point one it actually is the uh, you know data engineer's job but does it completely do that no so when i say it doesn't completely eliminate uh, what a data engineer wants or it doesn't completely uh, remove the challenges of a data engineer with, uh, when a data engineer deals with the data i essentially mean that uh, if, if you look at the data architecture of if you look at the lambda architecture it is inherently complex so if i go back to this slide you can see that it has two layers right so you need to maintain those two layers when you talk about the lambda architecture which is which increases its complexity also when you see that you have your streaming layer you have your batch layer you need to write a separate code base for your streaming layer separate code base for your batch layer uh, you know to to ensure that the data is consistent right and in case uh you you feel that the data is not consistent uh, the validation fails in that case it is really difficult to perform any updates merge merge operation and even to rewrite the whole data set right it is very complex in that regard so do we have any uh, alternative for it yes we do have an alternative for lambda architecture which is called your delta architecture so delta architecture essentially eliminates the challenges with your lambda architecture that we have with lambda architecture we are going to discuss about uh, delta architecture in our next video so uh, you know i i wanted to make sure that we understand what the lambda architecture is and uh, how delta architecture can eliminate the challenges that we face through lambda architecture so i'll definitely make the next video on delta architecture and thank you so much for being till here do remember to like my video subscribe to my channel and share in case you liked it thank you so much